Let's look at the periodic properties of our trig functions. Let's start with sine. I'm going to look for the place where the sine is going to be 1. So I'm looking for the angle where the sine is 1. And that's going to be at the top of the circle. So sine of pi over 2 is 1. Now since that's at the top of the circle, there's not going to be any other place within one revolution where the y-coordinate is going to be 1 again, because that's the highest spot that there is. So if I want to find 1 again, I have to go around again. So I could also say that sine of pi over 2 plus 2 pi is equal to 1. Or I could go back around the other way. So sine of pi over 2 minus 2 pi is 1. I could keep going around and around and around until I get back to 1 by adding multiples of 2 pi. So in general, sine of pi over 2 plus any multiple of 2 pi, so I'm going to call it 2 pi k, will equal 1, where k is an integer. So what this means is that if I add a multiple of 2 pi, we're always going to end up in the same spot, so the sine value will be the same. So we could say in general that the sine of theta equals sine of theta plus 2 pi k. Okay, we could do the same thing for cosine. Let me start by finding where cosine is 1, that's going to be the right side of the circle. So cosine of 0 is 1. There's not going to be any other place that that's going to happen. So cosine of 0 plus 2 pi k will be 1. Again, k is an integer. So we could say that the cosine of theta is equal to the cosine of theta plus any multiple of 2 pi. Okay, now the tangent function is slightly different. Again, looking for the spot where I get a 1, that's going to be in the first quadrant at pi over 4. Now if I go around 2 pi, yes, I'll end up in the same spot, but there's actually another place within one revolution, and that's where the x and y coordinates are the same. So at 5 pi over 4, we also get that tangent is 1. So this time I only had to add a pi, not 2 pi. Okay, so tangent of theta plus just a pi, oops, k, okay, equals tangent of theta. Okay, so what this means is that after 2 pi, everything's going to start repeating for sine and cosine, but after only 1 pi, everything will start repeating. So we call this the periodic property because if I add just a 2 pi, we get back to where we started. Same thing with sine and cosine. But if I add just a pi, the tangent values are going to start repeating. So for sine and cosine, what's called the period is 2 pi. And for tangent, the period is pi. Okay, so that's when everything starts to repeat. So let's find the exact value using periodic properties. So let's say I have the sine of 390 degrees. This could be rewritten as the sine of 30 degrees plus 360 degrees. 360 degrees is the same thing as 2 pi radians. So because the period of sine is 360, we're going to end up in the same spot as 30 degrees. So this is just 1 half. Okay, cosine, same idea. So let's say we have the cosine of 420 degrees. This could be rewritten as the cosine of 60 degrees plus 360 degrees. Since the period of cosine is 360, we're just going to be back to where we started at cosine of 60 degrees, which is also 1 half. But the good thing about tangent, or what's different about tangent, is that the period is only 180 degrees, or pi. So if I have the tangent of 7 pi over 6, I could rewrite this by just adding on a pi to 1 pi over 6. 
So because the period of tangent is pi, this gets me to tangent of pi over 6, where the cycle starts repeating. And that's square root of 3 over 3.